Hi, my name is Marcel and I'm a developer relations engineer at Google. I'm based in Singapore and I'm working on under 12 launch, working with partners and developers to make sure they integrate the new changes. We will quickly cover some of the new changes on under 12 that were announced during IO. Let's start by covering uh, three main topics today. System UI, privacy and security and app startup. Under 12 is a major turning point on Android with a more dynamic, more modern, and more polished UI that brings key changes to make Android feel faster and smoother. But we cannot do that only with the Android OS. We need you and your applications to support some of these changes to make sure that the Android ecosystem is better. Android 12 also is the first step towards the new material U that was announced during the Google I.O. This new design will enable users to customize a device and make apps adapt and feel more personal to their style. For more information, check the What's New in Material Design session covered during I.O. In, in this first version of Android 12, we are bringing the device theme color to your application by allowing you to extend the theme device default day night that will automatically get the device theme colors and you can use them for your background for your color accents or your text on top of that there is going to be a full range palette of colors that are extracted from the device theme or on pixel it will extract it from the wallpaper so depending on the wallpaper um, uh, color extraction the full device will um, get different coloring, and your application can as well. We could not make a new Android redesign without improving a core functionality of it, and those are widgets. Widgets can increase adoption and drive engagement, but they were a bit old. The APIs were old, and we are providing now a full refresh of those APIs, allowing you to provide better and more uh, new and modern uh, widgets. And that they are easier to build. Let's cover some of them. We are enabling now checkbox switches and radio buttons and better supporting tappable controls on the widget itself. So the users can interact directly with your widget without having to open the application. We are as well improving the discoverability of widgets by providing a full redesign of the widget picker, where you actually can provide a description of your uh, widget to tell the user what is the widget for. At the same time, we are not using anymore the static image of widgets. We are using a preview that you give to, uh, to the widget picker and is displaying it and can adapt to the sizes and the color of the, of the device. We did not stop on the home screen. We as well bringing widgets to other places, on search or on assistant, and even moving into the Android Auto users will be able to use your widgets connected with voice capabilities to interact with them. We are also bringing Material U to your home screen by enabling color and theming capabilities. So now users will be able to place the widget in different places of the, of the home screen and get a different color. As well, we want to unify the ecosystem and we are introducing an automatically rounded corner and padding for all widgets that they will be placed on an Android 12 device. This configuration can actually be tweaked by OEMs and launchers, providing a more unified ecosystem. Finally, we want to make sure that the way that you build widgets is the same as the new way of building applications. So we are bringing Compose later this year for you to build widgets. It's still not there, but we hopefully get, we're going to be there and it will make it easier to build backwards compatibility widgets that look great. In addition, we will as well provide some tooling for Android Studio. All right, so now let's go into another area that we have been iterating across different Android versions, and those are the notifications. So in Android 12, we are deprecating the fully customized notifications. We are enabling a sort of template where the app icon, the name, and the collapse, the collapse and expand uh, button will appear. And then you can provide your uh, custom um, notification to make sure that all the notifications are aligned 
Otherwise, the ecosystem keeps showing different notifications to the user that might mislead them. This is a change that will only apply to the applications that target SDK 31. But we encourage you to try it out and make sure that your application support that. Have you noticed this glow when you scroll uh, on a list on the, and reaches the top or the bottom and there is like some sort of glow appearing? Well, that has not changed on Android since many years. So we thought it was time to change it. So we are bringing a new, more uh, natural effect uh, to indicate the, to the user that it reached the end of the list or the scrollable content. With this effect that we call it stretch all, where the content will slightly stretch this is a change that might impact some applications. So it's target SDK. So it only applies when you target SDK 31. Um, we recommend you to check it out and make sure that your application uh, behaves as expected. All right, let's go to a, a major focus area on Android, and this is privacy and security. Every year we bring changes around this area to ensure that the ecosystem respects user privacy with high security standards. Basically, we follow three main principles. So we want to make sure the apps uh, and the OS is transparent to users on which apps are using what and when. We as well want to provide more control to the users so they decide what apps can use or what the system can use. And then we want to ensure that the applications are minimizing the data that they can collect. So. You can see more details about uh, privacy in the what's new in Android privacy in I.O. But now let's focus on a couple of changes. First, it's a transparency um, change that we are adding in Android 12 by telling the user when an application uses uh, the camera or the microphone. There is going to be an indicator appearing on the top of the device. The user then can tap this indicator and see which app are being using the camera or the microphone. What happens here is that if the user doesn't expect that indicator uh, and your application is using it, might uninstall it or revoke the permission. So there is not a breaking change, but you should ensure that um, these indicators appear where the user would expect it, because this change is applied to all apps. Following the changes on microphone and camera, we as well bring in more control to users by allowing them to block access to the camera and microphone to all apps, so to the full system. We designed these toggles on a way that you don't have to do anything. The moment that the user disables the camera or the microphone and your application tries to use the camera, it will get the blank fit or the microphone will get a blank noise. And the system will display a dialog asking the user to unblock the camera or the microphone so the application can, can use it. So you don't have to do anything. It will handle by the system. But again, check that it works as expected for you. Um, going, uh, continuing uh, with the control principle, on Android 12, we are bringing uh, more control over the way the location can be shared. So you know that on Android, there is the access course location and the access find location. So the access find location grants you access to a precise location, while the course only is more approximate. So on Android 12, regardless if the app asks for the access find location, the user will have the option to still grant only course by selecting approximate on the dialog. Um, and then only the course uh, access course location permission will be granted. So first, check if you actually really need find location and maybe just only request for course. Or second, if you really need find, make sure you handle this case. This, by the way, will only be applied uh, to the apps targeting SDK 31. Related to the location permission and following the data minimization, minimization principle, apps targeting Android 12 will have the option to decouple the Bluetooth scan and Bluetooth connect from the um, location permission. Previously, we needed that because Bluetooth scanning can infer location. But now on Android 12, you are able to say, no, no, I need Bluetooth scanning, but I'm not going to be using uh, location for that. And then the users will get a different permission dialog. More on data minimization. There is a good chance you have apps that you have never used, or maybe in months, and those apps still using a system resource. So 
it's it's important to um, to make sure those apps don't consume the system resources. So in Android 12, we're expanding the permission auto reset by um, making apps kind of on a four stop state when they have been long time without using. One by um, clearing the cache, removing all the permissions, and and avoiding that they can receive notifications or broadcast receivers. So make sure that um, your application can handle this data. All right. So now to conclude this overview, let's talk about the App Store tab. This is a major focus this year, and we want to ensure that the user has a great experience when opening your application from anywhere. One of the big changes is the new splash screen that will be applied to all apps. By default, the system will use your app theme background. They will uh, use your app application icon and will show it to the user when your application starts on the call start. You can actually uh, customize this by providing a different background or a different um, icon, even an animated icon, so they appear a slight animation. This might affect your application if you have actually uh, another splash screen that you customize by yourself. So in order to support this change, make sure that you remove your custom splash screen and start using the one that Android 12 will be providing. There are different ways to start an application, not only the user tapping on your icon. They can be started via links. So app links was introduced long ago to make sure that users can directly launch the right target application of a, a web link by providing a verification on the server side that Android can know that this is the right application to open. Unfortunately, we found that developers often make mistakes there and causing even more like these ambiguous dialogues. So on Android 12, we are, being, we are bringing some tooling where you can test actually uh, your links. And as well, we are allowing links to fail and don't break all the other links. So whenever uh, one of your links might fail, the other links still doesn't fail. So not all users will get this experience. On top of that, now on Android 12, if a link cannot be verified, it will open the browser right away. It will not check for uh, apps trying to handle that item if they, those cannot be verified. Another way to launch your app is via the notifications. But there is a common practice that creates a bad user experience. So we are introducing restrictions onto what we call notification trampolines. Those trampolines are not the fun trampolines in real life. Those is a pattern that many apps use that basically uh, whenever a user taps on a notification, launches a pending intent to open a broadcast receiver or a service that then will decide which activity or screen is the target one. This causes an issue that you can see here on the slides where there is a slight delay that can be really noticeable sometimes. So on applications targeting Android 31, you will not be able to start an activity inside a broadcast receiver or a service that came from a, not from a notification. So make sure that you are remove this tactic from you and target right away on the notification itself, which is the activity or screen that you want uh, to be open. Finally, before we conclude this section, there is another use case that is related to App Startup. This is the foreground service. Foreground services are very common for multitasking. Maybe a user is listening to a podcast while ordering some food or uh, checking their email while helping a friend with a turn-by-turn -turn navigation. So these are why foreground services are good, to provide multitasking and complete a user action. The problem is that we have found that almost half of the apps starting a foreground service start them from the background. So user is surprised that there is this unexpected, not actionable foreground service notification appearing, and they find them very distracting. Additionally, foreground service takes up valuable system resources. So from under 12 onwards, for application to target 31, we will restrict that use case. So only foregrounds will be, um, be able to launch by either user-initiated actions or from the when the application is in foreground. That was a really quick overview of some of the main changes on Android uh, during I announced during I.O. There are more changes like uh, Toast style is new, um, and there is like some limiting on the Toast. 
Um, there is as well the adoption of some of the Chromium changes that are into the native web view that could affect your application and many more. So we encourage you to watch all the sessions and the documentation provided for the under 12 changes.